Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today we're back out at the Georgia Museum of Agriculture and we're working on our steam engine restoration. We got our boiler, Frick boiler here, that we've been doing a cosmetic restoration on. And we're still working on getting the wheels on. And if you look right down here, we've got these uh, brackets here that mount on a, on a piece of wood up underneath some other brackets. And we got the stub coming out here and that is what the wheel mounts on, similar to the front. Um, what we need to work on though is down here at the very bottom we've got a hole that, and basically there's a rod that goes between these two one on this side and you got a matching one on this side and you got a couple of nuts that go in there that tighten up and basically that just kind of squeezes those together and holds them in so we need to build that rod to go to between those two places and uh, that's about an inch and one eighth inch diameter hole in each side what I've got is some inch and a half stock, uh, round stock. We're gonna turn a shoulder on either side of that that fits up between those two pieces and then thread some threads on the end so that we can put that in there, put some nuts on there and tighten those up as it needs to be. So uh, we're gonna go over to the metal lathe. I'm gonna actually do this project today out here at the museum using their lathe. Main reason is, is they got that big Lodge and Shipley lathe that has a through hole through the spindle that that inch and a half stock would go through. My lathe, my 16 inch lathe at home, is just under inch and a half. It won't quite fit through there and it's gonna be a lot easier to run it up through the spindle. So we're just gonna do the job out here uh, using their machine. Let's uh, go get it done. So down here on the floor, there's our piece of stock. Uh, looks like it's probably about 12 foot long. It's inch and a half. And uh, we got the Lodge and Shipley lathe over here. That we're going to be working on today so first thing i need to do is cut this thing to length i've already got my measurements uh i can't remember what they are so i wrote the measurements down here on the table with a uh just a piece of chalk but uh, the distance between those two points and there's 43 and three quarter inches i need for that shoulder to stick out three inches on each side be turned down to inch and one eighth uh, we'll thread inch and eighth seven threads on that total length of the bar needs to be 48 inches and 48 and three quarter inches so we're going to go over here and get that set up on the saw and get that sawed off so we got our piece of metal over here in the band saw and we're just going to cut this off to length all right we're over here on the lathe uh, i've got it stuck up through the uh, headstock i got three inches sticking out here and this needs to be turned down to one and one eighth inch. We're starting out at an inch and a half, and then we're going to thread uh, the end. I'm going to start by just facing the end out here. All right. And we'll touch off here. And let's come across that. I like this whole Lodge and Chippy lathe. It's been a while since I've used it, but it's a it's a it's a beast. It does a great job. Get a quick measurement on this. See where we're starting at. We're at one inch four hundred fifty thousandths. I need to go to one twenty five. So we got a good bit of material to cut off of this. Two, four, six, eight. That'll be a hundredth hour taken on pass here. And just hog it off. All right. Do another hundred thou. Two, four, six, eight, ten. We're at 250. I got 125 more foul to take off, so let's go ahead and take another 100. Get 
get another measurement here. And you take 25 more. That'll be 20, 2, 4, 5. About right there. Got a nice square shoulder on the back there. And I think we got it. Let's uh Alright, All right, we've got a uh cutter set up in here. First thing I want to do is uh just kind of chamfer my edges here. I like to put a good lead-in chamfer when I'm threading on the front there. And we're going to also come over here. That's why I break this corner. That's all we need there. All right, I'm going to come down here and touch off. And I'm going to feed in just a little bit. cutting oil on there. And we'll wait for a number to come around here and we're gonna thread in about halfway on there. And let's check that and make sure we're shooting for seven threads per inch on this particular thread. Verify that with a thread pitch gauge. We are ready to go. Let's uh, let's do this. Wait for another odd number to come up here. We're just speeding in a little bit at a time here until we get down to the bottom of that thread. I'm feeding in about 10 thou per pass. Waiting for a number to come around, engage our half nut, thread across. And when we get to the end, we'll pull out. Go back to zero. Again, about another 10 thou in feed. Wait for a number to come around on the thread dial and engage. And here we go again. As I get deeper into my threads, I uh, lighten up on my cut. Started out with about a 10 thousandths per pass, and now we're down to about a 5 thousandths per pass. As you uh, get heavier on that cut, you're taking a wider cut, and uh, you don't want to overload your, your cutter. And I'm just going to keep doing this until the points at the tops of those threads start to get a little bit on the sharp side. And when they do, that tells me I'm getting close to my final fit. And we'll start testing it with a nut until we uh, get it to exactly where we want to be. So here we got a number coming up right there. Single point thread. And, uh, this is, uh, if you're going to have a lathe and be a machinist, you need to learn how to do this. And I know it is, uh, it looks complicated, but guys, once you do it a couple of times, 
it's really pretty easy. It just takes some practice. And I'd encourage anybody that's learning how to use a lathe to master uh, single point threading. And I promise you, it won't take long. It just uh, takes some practice. Put you a piece of scrap metal in. Right, number coming around. Uh, for practicing, just put you a piece of scrap metal in there and cut threads. And I'm telling you, you do it a couple of times and um, you got it. It's, it's not as hard as it looks. I've got several videos out there to show how I do it. And there are plenty of other YouTubers out there that show how they do it. Pretty much most people are going to do it more or less the same. Uh, there may be some slight variations in uh, the way some people do things. But uh, it's pretty much textbook. All right, we are getting kind of close. I'm going to make another pass here, and uh, we'll check it with a nut. All right, let's see where we're at. It's a square head nut, and it's starting, but it's just a little bit tight. I was thinking it was going to be, but uh, I like to sneak up on that last little bit. I don't like to get there too fast, so let's get a little bit more lube on here. Go back to zero on our dial. I'm going to feed in a little bit more. Lightening up on my cuts here. Uh, just get a little bit cleaner cut. And a little bit goes a long way when you get down to the bottom of these things. So uh, we'll take another pass here and do another test and see where we're at. Still a little tight. You can look up in Machinery's Handbook how deep you need to cut these threads. There's several places you can look that up. Sometimes I will use an indicator and uh, kind of keep track of it. But honestly, guys, most of the time I just go for a good fit. I had someone ask me uh, recently why I don't use uh, thread micrometers to check. And, uh, you know, if I was making parts for, you know, that were made to a spec, and being sent out, you know, making a car or, you know, whatever manufacturing it's going to go in, that's important. But for a lot of what I'm doing, we're just going for a good fit. And every part is almost unique. Uh, doing repair work. I'm not doing making parts uh, for mass production. And I, I had that question recently, and I, I thought it, that was a good question. But uh, you kind of have to think about what kind of work you're doing as to uh, how you go about doing things. We should be getting kind of close. Need a little bit more. All right, we'll keep on going. All right, I think we are there. That's a nice fit. And, uh, we're going to flip this thing around and do the same thing to the other side. All right, we have flipped the part around. Uh, I measured this line here, not three inches from the end, but I actually measured from the shoulder on the other side, and it came out exactly three inches because my measurements were right, but I wanted to verify that. We're just going to turn down to that shoulder. Uh, but as before, first we're going to face that front, but before we do that, we're going to speed this thing up a little bit. All right, touch off there, and we'll feed it off here. Got a pretty fast feed rate there. That did clean up, though. Let me slow my rate down a little bit. All right, we'll come in here and touch off again. And let's cut across there. I did slow my feed rate down a little bit from what we had a while ago. Should give me a little bit better finish. 
Might take me a minute or two to get this done, but it's all right. You go right to that line, and that will be our shoulder. Take another hundred thou here. Just come in here, we are turning at, what is it, 518 RPMs. Uh, I know if it looks like, it looks in the viewfinder, it looks like we're turning real slow. That just has to do with the, uh, the, the I'm, I'm doing this at what, I think 60 frames or 30 frames per second on my film, and it, it, you're, you're getting an illusion that that's turning slower than what it really is, guys. Uh, it's kind of like a timing light on a car, you know, you got that, little blast of light and you can see a spot every time it goes around. Alright, so we are at 1 inch 195 thou. We're going to 125, so we need 70 more thou to come off of there. I'm just going to dial that in. 2, 4, 60, 70, right there. And this should get us to the our final measurement. We'll let that one go. I'll double check my measurement and then we can uh, be ready to start threading this side. I'm just going to go ahead and hit that shoulder about there in the back while I'm in there. And verify our measurement. We're right on the money, 125. Put our threading tool in there, and again we'll come in here and uh, chamfer these edges. There we go. Well, guys, there we go. Our uh, piece is all done here. Turn on both ends. Nice shoulder. Uh, good threads. Again, that's going to fit up underneath this bottom piece down here. Uh, we'll let them clean that up, paint it, and uh, get it installed. To get it installed, we're actually going to have to take this uh, casting off of this side over here, slide it in, put it on the other side, and then uh, put it back on. So I just can't just reach on there and slip it on. And uh, I don't have time to do that today, but uh, we'll let the museum staff take care of that. Uh, but we got our, got our little crossbar all machined out and ready to go one step closer to getting the steam engine uh, restored, finished up, and on display. Well, guys, uh, that is going to be a wrap. I hope you enjoyed that. A little quick project, some uh, threading and turning, uh, just, again, basic lathe work. Uh, things you need to learn how to do if you're going to work on a lathe and uh, things that come in handy for doing restoration projects like this. So with that, uh, that is going to be a wrap. As always, uh, thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up and comments are appreciated. Uh, hit the bell icon up there to get notifications when new videos are posted. And guys, we'll catch you on the next video. Again, thanks for watching.